Thank you very much, um, Kevin, for the introduction. And I'm also delighted to be here to share the research result from the survey uh, that we have completed last November. Uh, before I get started, I just want to say that this survey research is supported by the so Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. And actually, this the results that I'm going to share with you uh, is from the, our research on the, for the second stage, uh, that is the survey research. Um, and I also would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, BCPVPA for their work in a, a advisory capacity uh, throughout the stages of the survey design, delivery, and data analysis, and for um, facilitating access to uh, the BCPVPA um, member principles. And a uh, special thanks for David and Kevin for your guidance and support uh, during throughout the course of the study. And uh, many thanks for those who have participated in the focus group to provide valuable insights and feedbacks on the survey before we launched it. Um, there are many other people I would like to thank, uh, including those staff members from BCPA, P, uh, PVPA for um, s spreading the word and getting the news out through Twitter, website, and e-newsletters. Um, and also, um, last but not least, um, big thank you to all the participating principals who uh, generously um, given their time to share their insights uh, on their work and well-being. Uh, big thank you to everyone. And before I um, go ahead, um, please feel free to message me on the chat box. And I also have included my emails there if you have further comments or if you have I uh, would like to talk to me and please feel free to email me at the email address I listed on the slide. And also I'll be sharing our research in the coming days through Twitter as well. Uh, feel free to follow us. Uh, just another update that we are still uh, working on the report. Hopefully we can get the report down and get it out uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, probably uh, you have received the infographics, uh, so if you um, have not, please get in touch with me and I'll be happy to send you the infographics uh, that we have completed based on the survey research we have. So just to give you a quick overview of the survey research we have completed. So this survey basically was um, based on our uh, previous uh, work. Uh, so Dr. Katina and I have done a number of survey research on principles work intensification. So we built on that and included sections on principles well-being. So for this survey, we have uh, sent out uh, 1,239 invitations to the BC principles and we received 524 responses in total. And after the data cleaning, uh, we have valid cases of 474. So the final response rate for the survey is 38.3%. Uh, so among all the responding uh, principals, 69% uh, of them are from elementary school and 19% of them are from secondary school. There are 8% from element, both and elementary and secondary schools and 3% uh, uh, middle school principals. And uh, there are also 58% of female pr principals participated and 41.2% uh, male principals participated in this survey. In terms of the age and work, uh, work experience, uh, less than half of the uh, participating principals 
uh, um, less than 50 years old and um, and also over 50 percent of them uh, um, having five or less than five years experience so in general what we get is that we have a younger uh, principals population but with less than five years work experience so for the survey we have there were 56 questions um, that covered four major areas uh, one is on principles work intensification and then principles well-being uh, health and safety and also their coping strategies is um, work intensification so we set the survey in the larger social political context uh, so this slide basically gives you an overview of the political or social educational climate uh, under which how principles work has been affected. Um, so for this slide, because the survey was launched last November, so it's right before the pandemic. Uh, so our assumption is that uh, lots of things have changed during the pandemic. So for the uh, social and political climate, and probably you have noticed is that uh, over 88%, uh, 87% of uh, principals have indicated that growing mental health issues among students and teachers and parents are uh, significantly affecting their uh, work. And also the second is the uh, system anxiety in education. So how teachers and principals and parents and students feel um, about their own, uh, feel about education in, uh, various ways and how that affects principal's work. And of course, um, next to those two, uh, the uh, educational reform just recently happened, uh, or the policy change in BC, such as the Supreme Court ruling on class size and composition and BC new curriculum change. And those are the major areas that have um, significantly affected principal's work and include, uh, increase their workload. And I also like to draw your attention to the others um, option uh, because over 63% uh, of the principals choose other. In the other section and based on the comments, some of the principals indicated um, the following aspect that uh, also impacting their work, including having new superintendent or less experienced superintendents, uh, senior administration dysfunction or not qualified senior administration, rapid turnover at both district and school level, uh, societal changes in the perception of the purpose of public education, and also the incre increased requirements on health and safety issues in the education system. So one major uh, area of the research is the job uh, demand. Uh, so for the job demands, um, what I would like to draw your attention to is then how we understand it, uh, because identifying the most salient aspect of the job demands can improve our understanding of what demands are internal or external to the school, uh, what can be overcome or what cannot and also it affects how, prince, how we cope. Um, so for the job demands, um, I just wanna show you a summary table. Uh, this is based on some interviews I have conducted with some of the BC principals. And I'm not going to go through in details, um, but what I'd like to um, talk about is that the job demands according to the job demands and resource model. The job demands can be seen as two different categories. One is the job challenge, one is job hindrance. So the job challenges basically refer to the kind of demands along workload, time pressure, cognitive demands, and job hindrances basically include uh, role ambiguity or conflict, interpersonal conflicts within the school or across the system and also the constraints at the policy level or at the organizational level. So according to 
the job demands theory that job challenges are usually and temporary and transient, transitory, um, they, are, they are more likely to be overcome. But for the job hindrances, they are more at the system level. They are institutional and last longer and are more difficult to overcome. So when we look at the job demands, we also need to think about where do they come from and um, at what level. So those will have an impact on how we can cope or support school principals. So one aspect of the job challenge is the long work hours. Uh, so basically, they speak to the um, job demands in terms of the long work hours and how principals spend their time, where they spend their, their time. So um, I just want to give you a brief overview of how principals spend their time. So in average, um, principals in BC spend uh, 56.9 hours uh, per week. Um, and so this number is very consistent. Uh, the previous uh, research also shows that principals spend from 55 to 58 uh, hours in average per week on their work. And interestingly, compared to uh, other sectors or other leaders and middle managers in other sectors, principals are spending 15, 15 hours more than any other managers in other sectors. And based on our research, over 97% of principals spending more than 40 hours per week. So how do they manage their work? Uh, so at the upper right corner, you see the smiley faces. Uh, so over 65% of them um, indicated that they manage their work in a good and outstanding manner. But one in third, same average. And there's also 7.8% indicated they felt they manage their work very uh, poorly. So where do they spend their time? Uh, so we had a question uh, with the options on different work-related activities. And this chart basically shows you uh, where do they spend their time and what, what, what are the greatest, uh, greatest number of um, hours they have spent on different work-related ac activities. So when you look at on the left, those are the areas spent, principals tend to spend more time on and they are um, more the managerial or administrative tasks and work. And even though in education, we have a strong emphasis on instructional leadership, but in reality, principals don't have much time or they cannot spend much time on instructional leadership. So there's only uh, 3.5 um, hours spent on the curriculum and instructional leadership. So where would they like to spend less time on? And mostly they would like to spend less time on the managerial and administrative matters, such as internal school management, student discipline attendance, or administrative directives, school board committee services, and building maintenance. And they would like to spend more time on curriculum and instructional leadership their own professional development and classroom walkthroughs, and of course, student well-being and staff well-being. So those are the major areas they would like to spend more time on the daily operation of the school. So in terms of the modes of communication, um, so principals tend to spend more time on their emails. So in average, principals spent 9.6 hours per week on their emails. So next is the informal meetings, then the formal meetings, phones, text messaging, other modes of communication. And when we asked about um, where do they prefer to spend the time, and a lot of them indicated they prefer to spend the same amount of time on the communication, other modes of communication, text messaging, phone and school newsletter, formal meetings and social media and informal meetings. So how do principals um, 
feel about their overall well-being. Uh, in the in our survey, um, this is the result on how they feel about overall well-being. So one in third principles feel their overall well-being is very poor or poor, and one in four of them feel indicated neutral, and over um, nearly half of them indicated their overall well-being is good or excellent. So what we want, some of the principles also um, indicated the, their understanding of uh, well-being is quite different and depends on the school and on the context. And I think this also relates to the general uh, understanding of the well-being uh, so we, currently there's lots of discussion about mental health. Uh, so the men well-being work mostly focusing on coping with the mental health issues. Uh, but in our survey, we basically expanded the notion of well-being, uh, partly based on the Ontario well-being strategy for education and also based on the World Health Organization's uh, definition on mental health and well-being. And in the Ontario Wellbeing Strategy for Education, there are um, five dimensions, uh, four dimensions of well-being. So we expanded that and included to other dimensions and trying to get a holistic view of what well-being means and how we can have a better understanding of principles of well-being. Um, just one thing I'd like to remind you is that in the Ontario Wellbeing Strategies for Education, uh, basically, this strategy is mostly targeting at the students' uh, well-being. Um, so we would, in one of our recommendations is that in the any kind of well-being strategies or initiatives, the well-being notion of well-being should be expanded uh, to include all aspects of well-being, and also it should be expanded to include the well-being of school principals and other uh, educational staff. So which aspect of principles well-being are considerably or extremely affected? So in our research, uh, we shows the over 55% uh, of principles indicated their emotional well-being uh, is considerably or extremely affected. And next to that is the physical well-being followed by psychological well-being, the social well-being, cognitive well-being, then the spiritual well-being. So how well do they um, feel they can manage their well-being? Again, um, the, for the management of well-being, there are um, about four, over 40% of them indicated um, they manage their well-being good, and 3.9% indicated excellent. And also one in, one in third of the participating principles indicated neutral. And then one in four, nearly one in four indicated poor or very poor. So how well do they feel they can cope with work-related stress? The numbers are even lower for that. Um, so for the neutral is 25.9% um, and also the 1.7% indicated very poor and 13.5% indicated poor. Uh, over half of them indicated good or excellent. So for the coping strategies, uh, we had a question about how they cope uh, individually with the work-related stress and burnout. Um, so the word basically shows the various strategies, print principles used to cope with their uh, work-related stress and burn, burn out. So over half the principles indicated that um, they use, they basically spending time with their family, friends, or pets, uh, which is, um, so this one, 62% uh, of principles use this strategy. The next two, uh, this one is the um, watching TV and movies at 55%. And 53% of them indicated um, using physical activity or exercise to 
uh, cope with the work-related stress, and 52% indicated they talk with family or friends, and 49.5% indicated they talk with their colleagues either within or beyond the same district to cope with the uh, work-related stress. There's, o- there, there, there's only, um, yeah, there, for the principles, uh, some of the principles indicated they use alcohol to um, cope with their work-related stress. Uh, this is at the 33%. And uh, nearly 5% of them using prescription drugs and 3.4% using marijuana as a coping strategy. This is the section that is uh, coming out from um, the organizational health and uh, safety. Uh, So we had a question asking about how they have experienced the discrimination at um, the workplace. So over 43% of the participating principals indicated none, uh, but nearly one in third of the principals indicated they have experienced gender-based discrimination. And um, this also is reflected in the interviews we have conducted with some of the principals. Uh, For example, female principals uh, indicated that uh, when principals have done something wrong, uh, male principals are more likely to get away with it uh, than female principals. And also this speaks to the gendered organization, uh, the work that has been done by Joanne Acker, who basically indicated organization is gendered, uh, whether in terms of its process or the language they use or the symbols or the uh, social interactions. And the organizations, uh, particularly the, subst- the substructure or the system of the organization is established based on male ideals. Um, so the women principals in, who are in those gendered organizations feel more likely uh, discriminated um, compared to the male principals. So uh, there's also the uh, age-based discrimination. So uh, 19.5% of the participating principals indicated they have experienced the age based discrimination, whether they feel um, being treated differently or there's uh, inappropriate use of language towards younger or older uh, principals within the, uh, in the school. And beside the, um, the, one other aspect is the, uh, the ability-based and race-based and uh, religious-based um, discrimination that principals have experienced. And also there are princ- uh, principals also indicated, indicated other kinds of discrimination. So the other section include uh, being new to the uh, district or um, having no children of their own or not being local or they have experienced uh, language discrimination based uh, because of their the accent or the how they speak, uh, so those are the various aspects that principals have experienced uh, at the workplace. So this table basically highlights the different social groups uh, who have contributed to a unsafe situation towards principals. Um, so, sixty uh, over sixty percent. Uh, principals indicated they have been harassed by parents, guardians, or family members. And uh, 52% of principals indicated they have been threatened by parents or guardians. And um, alarmingly, um, about 40% of principals indicated they have been threatened by students, and 48% indicated they have been physically assaulted by students. So I'd also like to share a couple of quotes from principals who responded to the open-ended questions. So one principal uh, indicated that, I'm hearing a lot that there's an increase in the level and intensity of violence in schools that is negatively impacting principals and vice principals. 
I'm seeing violence and anger as the default for kids and often parents. Some colleagues are facing daily intense violence to the point where they cannot be the educational leaders they want to be. Instead, they are busy doing triage for violent behavior, uh, behaviors. So some principals also voiced um, frustration at the general response to threats and harassment. As one principal indicated, uh, greater support of administrative decisions in the face of apparent threats or press or litigation would be incredibly helpful in supporting administrators. Another also added, uh, we have to manage being harassed online and in person. This led to no recourse unless the harassment tends to threats of physical harms. So what actions do principals take after they are being either harassed or physically assaulted or threatened? Uh, so over 50% of principals indicated they will report to senior management director or HR or talk to their family members or friends or consult with other colleagues in the same district. And this, there are also 10% uh, of them who indicated they will do nothing. So what self-care can be useful uh, or helpful? So before I get to this, I just uh, wanna mention one aspect is that uh, we have been uh, emphasized a lot uh, on the self-care and, uh, but based on our research, the stressors, stressors are not only from the school level, but also from the system and policy level. So asking principals to rely on self-care is not sufficient to cope with the work-related stress and their work intensity. So we also need to have system change or policy change to be able to help principals to manage their uh, work-related stress and burnout. So one tip in terms of the self-care uh, is to identify the stressors. As I mentioned, the stressors can come from different levels. Some of the from school level, some can be system or policy level. And even at the school level, it varies from school to uh, school. And one, one may feel it's a stressor to others, it may not. Uh, so it is it's very important to identify this kind of st major stressors um, at your wo own workplace and develop a a uh, healthy response to those stresses. The second is to create physical routine, um, do physical exercise, um, get smart on doing this. So the SMART basically uh, stands for specific, measurable, uh, attainable, realistic, and time-oriented. So be specific, uh, for example, if you give a general goal saying, I'm going to get fit in one month. So it's very generous. So you may want to say, um, set the goal saying, you're going to walk for 30 minutes a day uh, for a week or two. So be specific and also be measurable. Um, instead of counting steps, maybe using time uh, 30 minutes as easier and make it more attainable, uh, set up the short-term goals um, in order to achieve longer term uh, uh, impact. Um, then be realistic and also uh, make it time oriented, break down into smaller pieces for the exercise you're doing. Um, so those are just the, some suggestions in terms of how you can motivate yourself to get into a particular physical routine that works better or best for you. And the next one is eat healthy. Um, so some people may prefer eating smaller meals with multiple times a day, or some people may just follow a particular eating habit. Um, but make sure you have you drink lots of water. Um, don't get dehydrated. Uh, so help you to uh, maintain that energy level, um, and also maintain good sleep hygiene, uh, such as having um, enough sleep and limit your caffeine intake. Um, particularly before bed, um, learn how to relax, uh, find the strategies that work better for you, and avoid reading on the gadgets before bedtime or um, 
stay up late watching TV or seek uh, other advice that may work better for you. And also practice healthy thinking. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, maintaining positive thinking, uh, but uh, lots of time it is, um, may not be easy to have that optimism all the time. So um, practicing healthy thinking and identify the thinking traps and thinking healthy is more helpful than just to uh, stay pos um, positive. And the, another one is to reduce the isolation. So in our research, uh, what we found is over 42% of the principals reported they have experienced um, workplace isolation. And so we recommend principals build uh, healthy uh, support networks uh, with either of his family members or friends or colleagues, um, and also try to make time to um, spend some time with them and, and also uh, seek their uh, mental or emotional support when uh, needed. Um, practice uh, and also seek the alternative point of views when something happens. Um, so those are very important to um, cope with the isolation at the workplace. Um, one other aspect is deal with the uh, uncomfortable or unpleasant emotions. Uh, as indicated earlier, that 55% uh, of principals indicated that uh, their emotional well-being is um, being uh, significantly impacted. Uh, so how you cope with emotions is a very important. Uh, so one of the approach is using the PATH, uh, which stands for pause. Uh, so the step is important because um, instead of acting on feelings right away, uh, you may want to stop yourself and think things through or step away for a bit. And the, the second step is acknowledge how you feel, uh, what you are feeling. So you may feel mad or sad. Uh, so it is okay to feel that way. Um, the third is to think. Um, so now you have a few moments to figure out what exactly it is that you're feeling and think about how you can make yourself feel better. Uh, and the last one, H stands for help. Uh, take action to help your self based on whatever you come out with the think step. The emails um, is, it, uh, has increased uh, principles workload based on the research results uh, because uh, principles spend 9.6 hours uh, per week in average on their emails. So how you manage emails uh, is a very important part of the work. Um, but this is a very individual endeavor. Um, it, you have to think about what works best for you. Uh, you can either set the boundary around one or for how long you should be checking your emails, or um, if you should come up with a system to sort the email out, or uh, some of you may, sometimes you, some of the emails you may only want to read once. So there are lots of research has, um, down on how to manage emails. Um, so you may want to take a look at those as well. And so those are just uh, some of the uh, highlights uh, on the uh, self-care. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to um, answer some of your questions and also feel free to um, reach me out through my emails. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Faye. I, I really appreciate such a comprehensive overview of your work. And for our attendees today, please put your questions in the, que in the chat box or the question box, and I will uh, share them with Faye before we close out. I am curious, uh, Faye, so your research partner, Dr. Katina Pollack, did an identical survey with Ontario principals. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you were there significant differences in any one of the aspects of the survey that you were looking at between BC principals and Ontario principals? Uh, in general, there's a similar, similar storyline between the BC principals and Ontario principals. Uh, what stands out in the Ontario survey is that um, 
principals tend to feel they have more challenges coming from teachers, whether because a lack of uh, training from teachers or availability of teachers. Uh, but the um, the reason I th we our assumption is that because we launched the survey around time when Ontario is having the labor dispute, uh, so that may probably contribute to the higher numbers on those uh, specific challenges in the Ontario context. Right. So that was in yeah. November, I believe, and at that yes. Point, uh, job action was just starting to ramp up in Ontario. So I can see how that might have skewed the survey results. Mm -hmm. uh, question about if you know any research regarding how to best manage email. Uh, yeah, so there are some uh, research done on the uh, emails. Actually, Dr. Katina, Katina Pollock has written an article on how to manage emails. Um, there are also some other resources. And what we were thinking about the um, is what has changed uh, because the, or as the result of the pandemic is that people are spending more time on the emails or online um, given the current situation. So we have done a, um, a focus group with Ontario principals uh, just to get a sense to, of the kind of challenges they have experienced uh, during the pandemic and ask them about the innovative innovative strategies they have been engaging in managing their workload during the pandemic. Here are some of the strategies or technology they have been used. Um, so they have used the, um, the uh, DRL and also Google, uh, As Asana, Slack, uh, and some Google principal management tool. But what we found out is that the during the pandemic, principals are spending more time on the phone calls, online office hours, and also the digital meetings. Um, but some principals are also using the videos to send out instructions and tips or uh, sharing the policies or translating policies or sharing other information. Mm -hmm. But when it's come back to the emails, um, as I mentioned, it's... Uh, it's an individual endeavor because uh, there's no universal solutions. Um, it depends on how your work habits, um, your work style. So you, as a principal, you may have to figure out what works better um, for you and um, constantly adjusting that. Um, for example, some principals prefer to check their emails only in the morning for an hour. Um, some other principals prefer to check their emails in the evenings, um, but set the setting the boundaries is very important. And also some of the email, emails you will probably want to read only once uh, without going back to it again and again. And other emails uh, you may, if you have to make a decision, but um, you're still hesitating, can be put in a, a particular folder and revisit uh, later on when you have time. So a question from one of our uh, attendees. In the survey, 7.6% of BC principals faced race-based discrimination and racial ethnic tensions. In comparison, the 106 of Ontario principals experienced the same thing. So the question is, um, what were some of the comments from the members who experienced race-based discrimination at the, uh, at the school system workplace level? Uh, that's a great question. Um, Unfortunately, unfortunately, we didn't get um, many comments from principals on those uh, areas. Um, I think it partly is because there's a lower participation, there's under uh, representation of principals from minority groups. Because when we look at the numbers, we only have uh, less than 1% black principals, um, less than 2% indigenous principals. And the numbers are fairly small. For indigenous principles, I think the real number is only 13. And for black principles, there, there are only two black principles who participated. And we would like to know uh, how many black principles or any other um, principles from other ethnic um, backgrounds um, in DC. Uh, so that's the, our next step is how to find out those information and do an analysis, particularly focusing on minority principles. 
but in our cell, we do have a question about uh, what are the ch some of the challenges that uh, can lead you to emotional draining situations or add to your workload. Uh, one of the challenge is the uh, racial tensions within the communities. Thank you for that. So um, uh, we're coming to the end of our time together, Faye, and just one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, did your survey garner any data regarding the importance of collegial support structures? Uh, we do not have that data from our survey, data from the interviews, um, particularly on coaching, mentoring, uh, informal meetings or informal groups among uh, principals. So we are still in the process of analyzing the data. So hopefully we will get the results out uh, as soon as possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. And if our research can help you at all, um, yeah. our members when they talk about um, uh, what are the what are the supportive structures in place that network and the relationship with our colleagues and being invested in mentoring relationships mm -hmm. far outweighs all of the other pieces. Those are the things they seem to really rely on for support. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, with that, I can't thank you enough both for the research that you've done, uh, really shined a spotlight on the work of principals and vice principals, the successes and challenges, and for presenting for us today. This is this is a busy time for you and a busy time for everyone else. I so really appreciate you making some time for us today. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity as well. And uh, so I have my email there. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to email me. And also we are doing follow-up research uh, interviews, um, just trying to uh, get a sense of the focus on the major areas of what we have identified from the survey. So I would be delighted to talk to you if you can reach out to me. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity.